Welcome back to the Expert's Edge. Y'all ever notice there ain't a lot of folks living in Wyoming? Some say the cowboy state is about as real as a $3 bill, before the comments section fill up with folks shouting, diversity ain't all it's cracked up to be. Let me holler some plain truths. Diversity matters to lots of good people, even if you're happy as a hog and slop living out yonder where the buffalo roam. I hear you, but maybe keep it down a tad. Now hear me out. More folks want diversity than don't, and that's a fact. A gumbo of people means a feast of good vittles and fun festivals. But when the stew's got no spice, things get plain fast. That's Wyoming's pickle. This lack of variety has put a hurtin' on growth. Finding a soulmate's harder than spotting a jackalope. Eventually, you're swiping right on your second cousin, Bleck. Business Insider ranks Wyoming near the bottom for dating and having a hog killing time. One gal shared how she dated three fellers in the same ding-dang apartment complex. Options are slim pickings. So while Wyoming's pretty as a prairie flower, a shortage of variety has slowed growth. But if you don't mind eating the same old chuck wagon grub, maybe it's the land of milk and honey for you. Just don't be surprised if your prom dates your paw. Now let's get started on my top five reasons why nobody lives in Wyoming. The first reason is Wyoming's rugged terrain. I moved to Wyoming for the rugged beauty and open spaces. What I didn't bargain for were the brutal winters that seemed to last nine months out of the year. The wind never stops blowing, and the snow piles up faster than I can shovel it. Did I mention the temperatures regularly dip well below zero? Wyoming's mountain ranges and plateaus make for stunning vistas, but aren't easy to navigate. Back in the day, these natural barriers stopped many prospective settlers in their tracks. Nowadays, modern roads and vehicles have made the terrain slightly more hospitable, but it's still not for the faint of heart, especially in winter. Getting supplies in and out of some towns can be nearly impossible when the passes close. The next reason on my list is Wyoming's harsh weather. The weather here is extreme and unforgiving. Wyoming ranks among the coldest and windiest states, with average temperatures well below most of the country. The continental climate brings huge temperature swings and little precipitation. Summers are short, and wildfires are common. The air quality deteriorates as smoke fills the valleys. Winters seem to last forever, and life moves indoors. Cabin fever sets in quickly. While the natural surroundings are stunning, the climate and terrain in Wyoming are harsh and inhospitable. No wonder the population remains sparse. The hardy souls who can endure what nature dishes out are a special breed. As for me, I may not make it through another winter. This cowboy state isn't for the faint of heart. My next reason is the lack of big cities in Wyoming limits economic and population growth. Wyoming has always been sparse on cities, but come on. The biggest one has 65,000 people. How's a guy supposed to find a decent date in a place like that? As a lifelong urbanite, the thought of living somewhere without a proper city gives me hives. I need culture, diversity, nightlife, not rugged mountains and more antelope than people. Of course, Wyomingites will insist they have all they need in their tiny towns. They'll tout the benefits of knowing your neighbors and living free of traffic jams. But for the rest of us, those benefits sound more like horrors. The lack of real cities has undoubtedly stunted Wyoming's growth. Businesses don't want to set up shop where there aren't enough customers or skilled workers. Young people flee for places with more opportunities and excitement. The dating pool is more of a dating puddle. So while Wyoming remains a paradise for solitude seekers and outdoorsy types, most people prefer the hustle and bustle of city life. Until Wyoming gets some proper cities, it'll keep its spot at the bottom of the population rankings. But something tells me they're just fine with that. Next on my list is that it's horrible for dating. I've lived in Wyoming my whole life, and let me tell you, the dating scene is bleak. When your choices are limited to the three eligible bachelors in your town, two of whom are your cousins, things get desperate real fast. I've taken to swiping on every living, breathing human within a 50-mile radius just for some variety. You know it's bad when your Bumble match ends up being your neighbor's livestock. Hey, at least their profile picture was flattering. I kid, I kid. But seriously, dating in Wyoming is no joke. There just aren't enough single folks to go around. And those of us looking for love often end up disappointed or dating our second cousin by accident. Whoops. With so few possible matches, the odds of finding the one are stacked against us. According to studies, 
I have a better chance of getting struck by lightning than meeting a compatible partner in this state. And even when I do match with someone promising, there's a good likelihood we're related somehow. Family reunions have taken on a whole new meaning. You think dating apps have it tough in major cities? Try operating one in Wyoming. There simply aren't enough users to sustain them, so most dating companies don't even bother setting up shop here. For those that do exist, the pickings are slim. A whopping 12 people within 100 miles of me, and three of them are already my exes. Location is everything. And in Wyoming, location is the reason dating fails. All joking aside, dating in the least populated state isn't easy. But for those of us born and bred here, the rugged terrain is in our blood. We'll keep searching for love in Wyoming. Lack of options be damned. Maybe I'll get lucky and finally match with someone whose last name I don't already know. A guy can dream. The last reason on my list of why nobody lives in Wyoming is its low diversity. Being the least diverse state in the union, Wyoming's dating scene leaves much to be desired. As a single guy living amongst rugged cowboys and tumbleweeds, my romantic prospects are bleaker than a high plain sunset. When half the eligible bachelors are related to you, and the other half's idea of a fun date is mutton busting at the county fair, a girl starts to think she'd have better luck with the livestock. Diversity matters to most folks nowadays, but Wyoming missed that memo. If you're looking for ethnic food beyond biscuits and gravy, or a music scene beyond dueling banjos, you've come to the wrong place. Cultural festivals here mean watching paint dry, literally. Don't even get me started on the fashion. Camo and cowboy hats as far as the eye can see. As for dating apps, swiping right in Wyoming often means ending up on a date with your match's roommate, cousin, or livestock. The odds of inadvertent incest or bestiality are higher than finding a decent match. Many a lonely heart has fled this state in search of greener and more diverse pastures. If none of this deters you, by all means, visit Wyoming. Just don't say I didn't warn you about the tumbleweeds and the tumbleweeds of eligible bachelors. Happy trails. So there you have it, buckaroos. Wyoming may be the epitome of natural beauty with its soaring mountains and wide open plains, but she sure is lacking in the human landscape department. With tumbleweeds rolling down Main Street and coyotes howling outside the saloon doors, this lonesome cowboy state is plumb empty Heck, half the population is probably related to each other. And good luck finding a date who ain't your cousin. But for those hankering for elbow room and breathtaking vistas, Wyoming just might be your cup of sarsaparilla. Just be ready to get real friendly with the locals if you catch my drift. Yeehaw.